everyone and welcome back um, to another video from me. <laughs> um, we are in another corner of my flat today. <laughs> um, suspiciously my flat has multiple corners, um, although only four. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going slightly insane from the uh, from the whole self-isolation thing. I live on my own if you, if you don't already know. so. Um, I think it's quite feasible that I might be actually insane at this point. But anyway, so I did a um, Instagram poll um, where I asked if people would prefer kind of um, self-help tips uh, for getting through the coronavirus uh, pandemic slash self-isolation situation. <laughs> um, so, or, or if they would prefer distraction, um, like particularly planty videos. Uh, to distract from the whole <laughs> the whole lockdown <laughs> that we're all currently under. Um, so yeah, um, I everyone voted for distraction, so here we are. Um, I thought that I would show everyone my Sansevieria collection, because I don't think I could say that I have a favourite uh, genus of plants, because I feel like there are so many so many genera is that the right word i think so um across the plant kingdom i feel like it would just be rude to choose a favorite but um this particular um collection this genus i hold very dear in my clock oh god what's wrong with me i hold very dear in my heart <laughs> so um yeah that is sansevieria um which is also known as the snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue um, and various different uh, names. It is widely known as being a pretty much indestructible plant um, and it is very easy to care for. Um, if you've managed to kill one without intervention from pests, um, I'm impressed because <laughs> um, it seems pretty much impossible. Um, so I thought I'd just go through uh, my whole collection today. Um, I do have a few, I never thought I'd be this person, but I've got a few of the same plant actually. Um, and I was thinking, do I show them? But they all look fairly different. So I will show them um, two. So <laughs> yes, I have not counted how many that I have in um, my collection, but safe to say it's more than I thought I had. So um Clearly I've gone mad on them. And I still want more because there, there's an incredible amount of different um, varieties of Sansevieria out there. If you want to um, have a look at what different varieties there are, a great person to follow um, on Instagram is Sansevieria underscore ID um, because they share all kinds of pictures of different varieties of Sansevieria and I find myself lusting after those things all the time. <laughs> so um, that's where you want to go. Um, so I will just get right into it. Um, I'll kind of go through some care tips as well um, because I do appreciate that while that everyone says that they're the easiest plant to care for, um, that's not the case for everyone because <laughs> there'll always be something that everyone can kill or someone can kill. Um, so the first one that I will show you is perhaps like the most generic version. Um, it's the one that you find in supermarket shops and everywhere for like three pounds. Um, and this particular one, I actually have three of. Um, so this is my big bad boy. This is uh, Sansevieria trifasciata variegata. But yeah, this is the most common uh, variety of uh, Sansevieria that you'll find, I believe, other than the straight uh, Sansevieria trifasciata which basically doesn't have the yellow lines on it um, and while this I feel like I feel like this is an underrated plant because you see it everywhere um, you will see it a lot in offices um, particularly because it is a low light plant um, but I mean if you actually look at it it is beautiful um, so I'll just show you kind of an up close I can't actually see the screen right now because I'm trying to do it from my back camera um, so I don't know how much you can see, but um, I just love it and I love drawing these. I don't know why, um, but there's something about the 
the shape, the pattern, everything about it. Now with um, these particular um, Sansevierias, if you um, allow the pup to grow like this, um, then that will continue to have the yellow variegation on the leaves. However, if you um, uh, propagate through cutting the leaves, um, then you will just grow a straight Sansevieria trifasciata. I'm not totally sure how the science of that works, but it's quite interesting. So um, you would just get the green um, part of this and not the yellow. So it's worth knowing if you ever want to um, <laughs> to chop up your Sansevieria. Um, I am also going to show you my other two because they're slightly different, although, although, although they are the same. Um, so yes, it's mysterious these ones. So this was the first one that I ever got um, and he seems to have an odd mixture of plain almost no yellow on the leaves um, and then he's got one here that's got almost none of this kind of ribbing kind of um, thing going on so I don't know he just does his own thing. I barely look after this one poor thing um, but he just thrives and this one is one that I had on my work desk um, but they made us take everything home with us so here he is <laughs> um, both of these were just really cheap from the supermarket so yeah um, and they are also Sansevieria trifasciata variegata then we have <laughs> the this is just the straight Sansevieria trifasciata um, so as you can see, it's pretty much the same as the other one, just with um, none of the yellow um, leaf edges that is the variegation on those plants. Um, so these, uh, you can also get really cheap in um, Ikea. Um, I haven't ever seen these in supermarkets, actually. I've only seen the yellow stripe version, but um, Yes, these you get all the time in Ikea and most uh, garden nurseries and they're relatively cheap. I wouldn't honestly spend more than £7 for um, one of this size because I, it's just a rip off otherwise. Um, but yeah, again, I, I feel like these are kind of such a statement plant because they're just so there. Um, I know that doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but I think if I had to choose one um, genus of plants to keep in my home uh, these would be it because they're just so striking I think um, and interestingly so this is the same um, exactly the same species this is also Sansevieria trifasciata and um, this particular one um, has been very much neglected in the light um, situation so you can see if I put them side by side this one's very much longer and thinner, and this one's shorter and fatter. Um, so this is where it's interesting when people say that these thrive on virtually no light, um, because that's not true, technically, really. Um, they can survive in no light, um, or almost no light, um, and they will still grow, but their growth habit will be very different. So this one, um, is extremely different to how this one grows which is kind of thicker lusher and this one's more etiolated longer I also really like it like this um, but you will find that um, you would probably need a lot more uh, of the plant to get the same effect um, but yeah so it's just interesting to see both of those as they are the same plant essentially just um, different um, growing conditions so that's cool to know. <laughs> um, right, let me put these down. I'm going to have to edit out all the flashing I'm doing here. Oh, I lied. This was my first ever um, Sansevieria um, in this lovely pot, which um, my other half's mum made for me, which was really lovely. And I nudged this off. Damn it. <laughs> so always the way. Um, so this is the... Uh, Sansevieria Fernwood. Um, this is the first one that I got <laughs> before I knew anything about plants. Um, I just loved it and he came home to live with me um, and he's continued to grow. I love, I just love how he grows. He, he grows um, in a cylindrical shape, um, really dark, 
uh, patterned leaves and it's in the same kind of pattern as the trifasciata. I'll just try and show you up there. Um, and it's just beautiful. Um, again, this hasn't grown that much considering um, how long I've had it. I've had it a good three years, I think now. Um, and he hasn't grown all that much, to be honest. And that is because I haven't kept him in great light conditions. And that just goes to show that while they will survive, they will not thrive. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this plant. There's something about him. He's so cool. Um, and he's been with me a long time. So yeah, I love you. <laughs> and just a quick side by side, because um, these are not the same. So this is Sa Sansevieria bacularis, uh, which is the, uh, it's very similar in its growth habit. Um, the interesting thing about these, both of these, when they first start um, growing new baby pups, they start off as like a, um, like almost like a moon shaped leaf um, in that it's kind of curved around like this. Um, and then as it grows older, it becomes the full cylindrical shape, um, which you can see here. Um, where are we? I don't know if you can see that, but it's not a full cylinder. Um, and some of them will just stay like that for the whole of their life and some of them will become a full cylinder which is lovely. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they, these are ever so slightly different um, in that they have different patterns. This one is darker, this one's lighter. This one has, I know it's not quite right to say a matte finish for a, for a plant but that's what it is. It's like velvety. Um, but not velvety. I can't really find an appropriate way to describe it, but it's like, I don't know how I imagine a reptile would look if you like, like squinted your eyes. Um, whereas this one's a bit more shiny. I, I don't really know how to like describe that adequately, but um, yeah, so they, these are um, very similar, but they are actually different species um, or they might be hybridized. I'm not totally sure on that, um, but yeah. So thought it was interesting to put those two together because they're similar but different. <laughs> and this is one that you will have seen before. Um, this is the Sansevieria Masoniana. Masoniana. I also see this down as Victoriana sometimes, um, but it is characterized by being a single leaf um, and it has some amount of pattern. Um, you can see that one side is slightly less patterned than the other. This one's actually growing a baby, which I'm extremely happy about. Um, so that's not another leaf of this plant. This is a pup. So this is a separate plant um, from the original mother plant, uh, which is, I don't know, I'm very happy about this. <laughs> um, I love well thin sense of areas. Um, I just, I mean, what's not to love? They're so weird and it's just a leaf, but that's the whole plant. What's that about? <laughs> um, okay, where are we going next? Um, okay, this one I am going to have to remind myself of the name of it because um, I actually have completely forgotten uh, what he is. Um, I only bought him fairly recently. You may have seen him in my Stuart's plant haul. Um, he actually ended up having a root mealybug, uh, which sucked a bit, so he's looking a bit less um, dense than he was when I first bought him but um, Stuart's was actually really good and they gave me a five pound off voucher um, for my next purchase um, as like a, a sorry thank you or something but yeah that was really good <laughs> um, but yeah he's um, slightly different from the trifasciata in that he's um, got a slightly curved leaf um, here um, and it also has um, a kind of dark, almost dead looking edge. Um, I can't really describe that very well. So it's, it kind of makes me think of somewhere in the middle of the um, Sansevieria trifasciata and the Sansevieria uh, fernwood. Oh yeah, it's fernwood micado or micado fernwood. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that came back to my head. Um, it's somewhere in the middle of those two because it's got the, the slightly rounded leaves. 
but yeah he's just really cool he looks ever so slightly more rustic um than the trifasciata so uh, he makes me a happy bunny there's another one that i want to show you um to compare with the trifasciata so this is the sansevieria or Brit or Britanniana Jade. <laughs> um, I can't say that. Um, so this one is also very similar to the previous one that I just showed you, um, but it has the flat, the fully flat leaves. So it's similar to the Trifasciata in the leaf shape and ever so slightly in the leaf pattern, although a lot of these are slightly less patterned than the Trifasciata. Uh, but it does have this um, kind of orangey brown dead looking edge which the trifasciata doesn't have um, oh. <laughs> that was ladylike um, so you will see if I put them side by side you will see the difference um, although if you were to see these in a shop uh, separately you might not necessarily see the difference between them but um, this one has a slightly wilder, more twisty growth habit, while this one um, is much more of an upright kind of growth habit. Um, and this one definitely has wider, thicker leaves, um, a bit more like the Masoniania. So you can see how they all kind of fit into the same family. Um, and they're all slightly different variations of themselves, which I just, I am all about. I just love it. Okay, I don't know why I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember the name of this um, lovely Sansevieria. So I only recently got this, um, and I just it's just something about it. But this one has a very different growth habit in that it's kind of in a nest shape. Um, I'm trying to find the, the best way to show you this. Um, so it's like in a nest shape, um, and the middle of the plant is in. The middle that's obvious the the new growth comes from the middle um which is really interesting um so i don't know if you can see down there i'm going to drop this in my coffee now aren't i um but right down here is where the little new leaf comes from um and the outermost leaves are kind of dark uh green and then the inner leaves get gradually more yellow so the outside of the inner leaves is yellow um uh, sorry the outside of the inner leaves is dark green and variegated um and then as you look at the other side they're mostly yellow so that's it's just it's just beautiful like i can't this is so pretty um this one needs a little bit of tlc he's uh i don't know he's not seeming his best right now but um he's not unhealthy he just he's just not Wow, flourishing. I've got to stop spiking my face with these. He's just not flourishing. I think he needs a little leaf clean and just, just you know, some TLC. Right. Since we are talking about uh, nest, nesting, nesty tons of areas, um, I found this little guy. He's so cute. Um, he's not the best specimen, but honestly, it's the only time I've ever seen this um Sansevieria for sale so I was just like I am having this like I don't care um and it is another one that has a nesting growth habit so the growth comes from the middle of the plant um unlike some of the other ones that we've been looking at um so yeah he's just so pretty let me show you I don't know I I feel like this is the golden honey eye um, but I'm not 100% sure, so whatever it is, I will put the name on the screen. Um, but there's just something so pretty about this plant, and he's I just love that he's not like rich colors, it's just very pale, very muted kind of colors, which is just I don't know, it makes me a happy bunny. <laughs> um, and then on to his cousin, <laughs> uh, or brother from another mother, I don't know. Um, this is the bird nest Sansevieria. I think this is also called the Sansevieria Hanii, um, but not golden. Um, so again, uh, this has a um, nesting growth habit. So it grows from the middle outwards. Um, 
This one, I don't know why, but he's got a bit of a, a variegation here, which is random because it's not anywhere else on the plant. Um, but yeah, he's like he's like the Sansevieria trifasciata version of the honey eye. <laughs> um, I don't know, it all gets a bit weird. <laughs> the more you think about it, the more weird it gets. Again, this one's had a bit of a bash. I did drop him from my bookcase and uh, he lost a few leaf tips, which is very sad, but at some point when he's grown a bit more, I will just cut them down and hopefully propagate them. I don't honestly know. I think that these will still grow in the nest nesting growth habit um, if you propagate from the leaves, but I don't know. So I'm willing to experiment and find out um, so I will let you know if and when I do that. Um, I've, yet, I've yet to find um, out a, an effective way of propagating Sansevierias from their leaves because they seem to just dry out on me or shrivel or I don't know. Um, so yeah, uh, nothing has been successful as yet but I will let you know <laughs> if and when that becomes successful. Right guys, I know this is getting to be a long video, um, I've just got a couple left, so uh, tighten your belts, um, don't really do that. Uh, this one is affectionately known as the <laughs> uh, middle finger plant by my brother because he's got one that's got literally five, five fingers and it looks like one's a middle finger. Um, but my uh, little pup that I cut off uh, from his um, it's only four fingers, so don't ask me why I've got a feather in there. It's one of my mum's old chickens. <laughs> um, so this one um, also kind of grows from the centre, but it grows in a in a line, so it won't you won't find it sprawling out in like a nest pattern. It's a lot like the Sansevieria baculares. It just has a different um, growth habit. I think this is Sansevieria cylindrica. I will double check. Um, so yeah, this one's just a really cool guy. I, he's just hanging out, growing his fingers. Love him. <laughs> okay, this one. I'm a big fan of this one. Um, so this is the Sansevieria samurai. I'm like 90% sure that it's the Sansevieria samurai. Um, again, I'll just put the, the name um, in the description there. But um, he has got a friggin' awesome um, growth habit. So you can see it grows up from the middle here and shoots off leaves to the side. Um, and I just, it's just so pretty. Um, I just love it. I, it's just so weird and cool. And I'm a great big fan. And again, uh, this comes, the new growth comes from the middle here. Um, and you can get all sorts of different growth behaviours from this plant um, depending on what kind of light you give it. So if you twist it around so that each side, as a new leaf is coming out, each side um, gets the sunshine, um, then it does alter the, gro the growth and it can go in kind of a spiral pattern. Um, if you always keep it in the same uh, direction, then it will grow upright um some of them if you if i think if they've got a lot of light they grow more sprawled out or it might be the opposite i can't remember i'm gonna assume if it's got less light they grow more sprawled out i think um because my top leaf has been in very little light and the rest of it was grown uh, before i got it so i'm assuming that that's the case um so yeah he's so cool i I don't know, I just friggin love this. Um, and I believe this is a similar cousin <laughs> um, to the Samurai. So uh, this is the, if you watched my previous video on the haul from the rare plant shop, uh, this is my Sansevieria Star Canary, um, which is now just my pride and joy. I mean, it's, it's just too cool, man. Like. If you didn't watch my video before, it's basically just me gushing over this plant. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, he also seems to grow from the middle, as you can see, and uh, also will twist if you um, alter the growth. Uh, sorry, the light um, that you give this plant. So, yeah, he's just oh, just I don't even know what causes the yellow in this plant, but I know I'm in love. I don't know whether it gets darker over time or 
what the situation is here really but it's just I just I just love you <laughs> it's I just love you okay um there's something about Santa Varias for me I desperately want to get my hands on a um silver flame sansevieria and a moonshine sansevieria um and there's another one that i'm thinking of um i will try and put pictures um either on my left or my right i don't know which one but yes if i do i will for sure be letting you guys know so um now that we've gone through all of uh these lovely plants i've just realized that one of them's missing some uh, soil <laughs> i don't know where that went um so now that we've gone through my collection i will just share some care tips so um in terms of your potting mix um uh, sansevarias hold and retain a lot of water in their leaves so they are um succulent type leaves um so you really don't want to overwater them because they will just turn to mush um, so they don't like to have wet feet, they like the soil to be dry because they do come from a very dry, arid climate. So um, they, you want them to be in desert-like conditions. Um, so what you want your soil mix to look like is any good um, compost or uh, potting soil. Um, you want uh, a ratio of that with horticultural sand and perlite your ratio wants to be um, three parts soil to two parts sand to one part perlite um, so they like a very sandy kind of gritty uh, potting medium to be sitting in um, they don't often have large root systems um, for some reason they're always potted in coir I don't know why because there is virtually no nutrition in there whatsoever and it kind of retains moisture a lot better than um, <laughs> than this type of mix but um, that's what I've had the most success with with my Sansevarias they seem to love it they don't have a, a massive root system so you want to have them in a quite a small pot really I mean if you look at this guy um, this pot is going to do him well for a good another year at least um, they don't like to be in a big pot this uh, Sansevieria masoniana um, is obviously sort of getting to the absolute maximum width of the pot but um, in terms of the soil there is a hell of a lot of soil in there for him I won't be repotting this plant for a good year or so um, so they don't like to have a lot of space um, because if they don't have a lot of roots um, they can't take up much moisture out of the soil so that means that you end up with soggy soil um, for long periods of time which increases your risk of root rot um, so that's kind of the thinking behind that in terms of light requirements as I've shown you um, they do well in bright light they're not um, averse to it and I don't believe they um, really get leaf burn as far as I'm aware um, so you could quite easily put it in a south facing window provided you kind of graduate up to it slowly if it's not been in one before but you could um, quite easily put those in an inner south facing window I believe in Africa they live outdoors um, in the hot African sun so I think you'd be fine um, equally um, they do just fine in, in lower light conditions you just will find um, if it's in a very low light condition it probably won't grow um, which is fine if you are buying it for a specific place for like a statement piece for your bedroom or something like that um, you probably don't want it to grow a huge amount um, because it will take over your room <laughs> um, but uh, yeah something to consider if you do want a lot of growth out of your plant you will need to give it more light um, fertilizing it they're not they don't really need much in terms of fertilizer in the growing months I kind of fertilize mine once a month or so um, again it really depends on how much growth you want out of it um, they don't need it um, they have adequate nutrients in the soil um, as long as you're potting on once every one to two years they should be fine um, they are very sort of low on the requirements <laughs> list of things um, watering I always wait until mine have completely dried out before I water again just because they are a succulent plant and they don't like to have wet feet um, so if you have overwatered yours um, just hold off for a long time 
also be very careful of um, putting them in cash pots so like this um, so if you've got your nursery pot I'm gonna make a mess of this now if you've got your nursery pot sitting in your cash pot just be very careful that they're not sitting in water for any prolonged period because uh, that again will rot the roots um, pest wise I think the only pests I've come across that have ever affected my Sansevieria has been root mealybug um, so I don't think you need to worry too much about spider mites or thrips or um, actual above soil mealybug um, I haven't had that problem but for root, root mealybug um, your traditional pest uh, <laughs> removal methods won't actually make much of a difference so what you need to do is get rid of all the soil off of your plant um, and dunk the roots into um, water at about 30 to 35 degrees celsius um, and leave them there for about 15 minutes um, anything else isn't really going to kill off your root mealybug and you just need to use fresh soil fresh pot throw away the pot or completely disinfect it um, and yeah um, that's pretty much all you can do for root mealybug but that's the only problem I've ever had with mine um, so yeah uh, I think that's pretty much it um, like I said if you want to propagate your um, Sansevieria um, for me personally I find the only way that I've managed to do it is by letting it grow pups um, but if you um, do want to propagate from a leaf um, bear in mind that the variegation won't co sort of follow on with whatever grows from that cut leaf um, but what you would need to do is cut it um, in a straight line with a very sharp knife um, make sure you remember which way is up because you always need to point you need to pot um, or dunk sort of stick in water the bottom part so let me do an example so say for example I was taking a leaf cutting off of this plant um, I would cut it probably as close to the bottom as I could really um, some people I know have had success by cutting at sort of two inch intervals um, and then potting um, but just make sure basically you know where the bottom end of the leaf is um, you can even mark it on with like a sharpie or something leave it to dry um, so that it calluses over that it depends on your climate it might be two hours it might be two days it really depends on what conditions you are living in um, but once it's dry you can either pot it into um, kind of some really sandy um, soil mixture that's moist um, I think what I've read is recommended is about half and half uh, soil and sand um, or you can um, stick it into water which has never yet proven successful for me but um, I'm not very good at changing my water so I think I think that's probably a large part of the issue <laughs> um, so yeah um, but make sure whichever way you're doing it make sure you put the bottom end into the water or into the sand um, and that is how you would grow your babies out of your uh, not your babies but your baby sense of areas <laughs> um, so yeah I think that's everything um, if you have any questions or any um, tips or anything like that, drop them in the comments. Um, make sure that you uh, leave a like and subscribe if you like to. I would really love to know what kind of Santa Varias you have and what your wish list Santa Varia is. Because um, I'm just always up for more Santa Varias. So <laughs> um, let me know in the comments and I will see you again next time.